today we are going to talk about PyLabs. PyLabs is Europe's longest standing PropTech VC. It was launched in 2014 and with an industry leading track record across 51 investments. PyLabs invests in startups that use technology solutions to enhance any stage of the real estate value chain. So today I welcome Mr. Faisal Butt, founder and CEO of PyLabs with us. Hi, uh, hi. Um, great to be here and uh, delighted to be uh, being interviewed by you. Thank you, Faisal. So I, our viewers would love to know about PyLabs and how big is the fund size and what specifically PyLabs is actually expecting out of PropTech startups in Europe? Um, hi, so as, as you mentioned, we are um, Europe's first and most active uh, PropTech investor in Europe. We're investing across the continent. We have portfolio companies in, in the UK, Netherlands, France, um, Austria, Finland, etc. And I think what's important to note is that European startups are actually thinking globally on day one. They're, they, the home market for a lot of prop tech startups are quite small. So um, our, you know, to give you an example, we have a company called Office App in Amsterdam. They're a tenant engagement app for uh, occupiers and offices. They're very much catering to and, and have built a solution that's globally portable and is being rolled out to clients globally. And that's a, that example um, cuts across most of our portfolio. Uh, in terms of fund size, we're on our third fund. Uh, it's a 60 million pound fund, um, and we're investing in 50 new companies in this new fund to add to the 50 companies we already have in our portfolio. So hopefully by the end of the deployment of this fund, we'll be um, at around 100 portfolio companies. And this is really just the beginning. Uh, we think it's early days for PropTech, and uh, we're seeing a real surge in um, more liquidity coming into the prop tech sector, more business formation, new ideas being formed, et cetera. So we're super excited. And in terms of um, the next five years, we think that a lot of the digitalization that was already happening pre-pandemic will only be accelerated. So which are the sectors PyLabs is more excited about and see a great potential to invest in? We're quite a thematic investor. So we um, speak to our LPs, we speak to the real estate industry, um, the leaders, the senior leadership teams at the large real estate uh, owners. And uh, we identify themes that uh, we think will shape the next five years of the real estate and construction sector. So uh, sustainability is a key theme of ours. So technologies that can help um, make uh, buildings more sustainable and to help them reduce their carbon emissions and energy usage. Um, another big theme of ours is um, the intersection between prop tech and fintech. So uh, technologies that can help with um, the uh, digitalize the financing of real estate. We're also investing in, um, in, in specific themes uh, related to the future of work and future of offices. So we've been very active in that space. I mentioned Office App earlier. We also have another company in Bulgaria called Office R&D um, that, that are both playing a part in shaping the future of the office sector. Um, future of retail is very interesting. Retail, as you know, has been disrupted by e-commerce, Amazon, and now even more so with the pandemic. So uh, you know, new uh, models for retail are emerging and we're very interested in, 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 in investing in those as well. Um, and then, you know, I won't go through all of our themes, but um, construction tech is an area we've actively invested in. And data, data analytics, when it comes to leveraging data to make um, more sound investing and asset management uh, decisions is also a key area. So we have seen uh, your investment has been there in all stages possible in pre-seed level or seed funding level. What exactly your criteria for choosing a particular startup and what is that you look forward to in a startup before investing it? Um, we're looking for um, startups that have are in a sector which um, has a kind of macroeconomic tailwind like there we have to get excited that they're is real scale to be built up in the space that the sector is targeting. Um, we're very much focused also on the management team and the founders. That's key because ultimately anyone can have an idea, but you know it, it all really 
comes down to execution and that's what separates the the winners in a space and those that don't make it so a big part of our assessment is on the management team um, we are also looking at um, the company's ability to continue to raise capital um, as we know with the prop tech startups you know they need to raise a seed round an a round b c round etc to ultimately get to a position where they may exit one day and uh, we need to feel confident that this company will be able to raise capital um, across multiple rounds and of course we look at the commercial traction so a big part of our assessment is going you know getting out of the office and and speaking to the customers uh, it's important that we understand the customer's point of view on what pain points are being solved what problem is being solved by the technology and why this tech or why this particular solution is better than um, the incumbent system that is being used and we tend to want to see that the prop tech solution that we're investing in is uh, better by an order of magnitude than any current system not just marginally better right so this year pylabs had its eighth pre-seed growth program consisting of five startups so could you tell us more about this how the program was and what was the idea behind to start with this program in the first place well this this year's program um was our eighth cohort as you say it was our first program that we ran digitally because of the pandemics we had to make a very quick decision to pivot to a digital format um, which actually ended up being very successful we had a highly engaged program um, we had hundreds of mentors and investors meet our five teams um, we ran workshops on a weekly basis um, kind of training up these teams on everything from sales training to um, negotiating the legals of a funding round to how to raise capital we introduced them to investors etc so it's a very comprehensive program and the companies have graduated out in, uh, and they're quite well placed now to go out and raise their next round of capital and grow their business um, so the the program um, why we brought the program together is because we think that real estate tech prop tech is a difficult sector uh, we think that you need the real estate industry is you know tip has traditionally been a bit of an old boys club and it's not easy to break into so what our vision for Pi Labs was to be the gateway between all these great ideas that the prop tech founders are bringing about and the traditional real estate industry and bring the two together and uh, by doing that we facilitate trials of the prop tech solutions into the real estate industry's portfolios. We facilitate investment um, we, and we facilitate scale. So it's all about um, helping grow these startups from being kind of at idea stage or early monetization stage to really scale up quickly through the program and by access to capital and access to customers. Right. So you must have interacted with so many startups. So what are the challenges that you believe that PropTech guys are really facing and how PyLabs tries to help them to solve that problem? And how do you associate with these startups to scale? Yeah. Um, so uh, they, they face all kinds of problems, startups I'm talking about. I mean, one of the common problems is some of these founders have not successfully raised large rounds of capital right they may never have raised like a four or five million pound series a round um so we all, we already have a database of all the series a investors that have invested with us in our portfolio company so as our portfolio has grown to around 50 companies and many of these companies have raised series a and series b rounds we have um a ecosystem that we've built globally right so we've had um, the likes of Goldman Sachs that has, have invested in Trussell. We have Google that's invested in Ask Porter. We have, um, you know, a number of VCs that have participated and invested alongside us or after us across our portfolio. So we help with their fundraising um, because the, we've built this ecosystem that's quite strong of other investors uh, that invest in PropTech. We um, help them with hiring as well. Yeah. Um, we, we have a talent pool that, you know, sits across our ecosystems so we can help them bring, a, we can help the startups 
fill out their C team because oftentimes in the early days, the C suite is not completed. Um, we help with customers um, and that's a key area where we get involved where they may be looking to um, sell their service to a particular type of landlord or a developer or a real estate investment manager. And we already have relationships with these, um, these customer groups. They are either mentors in our program or they're LPs of ours, or, you know, um, we know them, um, we know them through, through, through other channels, but a big part of our job is bringing customers to the table so that they, the startups can gain commercial traction quickly. Right. So based on your observation, is there any particular domain where you believe there's still a huge potential that is still there and not, not many startups are working towards solving that particular problem? Like if you could just tell us a few problem areas that you believe that the startup should be focusing and haven't addressed till now. We think there's quite a few areas. Like um, I think there's a lot to be done um, still in... Um, in, in construction tech, I think that you know construction's a global, um, big global sector that's very inefficient and is ridden with cost overruns and project delays. So we think there's a lot to be done in that space. We yeah. think that um, the um, real estate investment management, uh, you know, the systems being used by real estate investment managers are quite archaic, and there's a lot of opportunity there. And we're actually publishing. A research white paper on that space um, in the next uh, eight weeks or so. Uh, we think that retail um, is is being disrupted and has been for many many years now. And there's a number of new startups that are going to emerge in that space. Um, and and we continue to look at a number of like AI related businesses, like AI as they relate to different parts of of the real estate value chain. So w there's a lot still to be built um, and still a number of startups um, that are still emerging. So we think the next five years actually we'll see um, a big um, kind of uh, a boom in new business creation for PropTech. Right. So we have spoken to few investors in Asia. They are betting on co-working and co-living space to be a profitable model in the future. So what's your take on this? On the co-working um, space side, I definitely think that there's going to be an increasing shift um, from conventional offices to flexible offices. Right. Um, traditionally, um, flexible offices have made up a very small proportion of the overall office sector. I think that that's now going to flip and you'll see a, a, either the, the supply of flexible offices go up. So I think that That'll be great for a number of startups that have built solutions for that space. And we have a few in our portfolio, um, such as Office R&D, um, which is a kind of like operational backbone system for the co-working sector. We think co-living is uh, um, interesting as well. Um, there are affordability issues when it comes to buying property across developed and developing markets. So um, we, we think that the right systems the, the tenant engagement apps for those types of systems, the booking systems um, will be very, will be a very interesting area to watch as well. Okay. And so what do you think the prop tech investment landscape will look like in 2021 and beyond? Well, it's, it's been maturing, right? You know, we were the first investors in Europe, but uh, since we, um, you know, have built a, the largest portfolio of prop tech in Europe, a number of other investors have come on to the landscape. You know, at a, at a, much more recently, you know, you have the investors that have um, uh, set up. You have real estate companies that have set up uh, corporate VCs. Um, so you'll see some capital coming out of corporate VCs. You have had um, funds like us, who are prop tech funds, but they're raising capital from institutions. So you, you know, you'll see more of those across different stages. Um, you know, some late stage funds, some early stage funds, and more and more so you're having conventional VCs like generalist VCs allocate to prop tech as well. Um, and, you know, we think that more institutional capital. So currently you don't have that much institutional capital coming into prop tech because it's quite a nascent category. But as the category matures, we expect there to be um, a lot more institutional capital coming into the sector. So it's an exciting place to be in because you're still in the early stages of the overall yeah. maturation of the sector. 
So what's next for PyLabs? Well, um, you know, we, we're very excited about what we're currently doing, which is, uh, um, you know, investing across our home turf of Europe and continuing to be the leader in our, in our region, um, in, you know, investing in PropTech in Europe. Um, you know, ultimately, our aim is to be a global um, prop tech investor, um, investing across Asia, um, across Europe, and across other geographies as well, um, raising capital globally, investing into prop tech propositions globally, and then helping to kind of port, you know, startups from Asia into the European markets or taking startups from Europe into the Asian markets or into the US markets, etc. So we're just putting the right um, infrastructure in place right now. So we're very much in building mode so that we can be well positioned to be um, the global um, prop tech fund manager. Last and very important, in the upcoming BWT Asian event, what are the key things you're looking forward to? Well, I'm looking forward to um, you know two things really. I'm looking forward to meeting um, some of the startups uh, that are coming out of uh, Asia and very interested to see how they compare with our European startups and see whether um, we could look to perhaps invest in them and bring them into the European markets as well so help them scale beyond just their home region um, and uh, the other thing we're looking for is um, you know we're interested in meeting the large landlords and developers and real estate investment managers in Asia who are deeply interested in innovation and prop tech and, and explore how we could also partner with them and help them find um, and access the latest innovations um, that are coming out um, in the prop tech universe globally. That's great. Thank you so much, Faisal, for joining us today in Reality NXT. It was a pleasure to have you and to know more about PyLabs. Great, thank you so much. Pleasure, um, pleasure to speak to you as well. Thank you. Thank you.